We would like to felicitate our guest and to do the honor, may I request Honorable President ICCR.
Namaskar. The Indian Council for Cultural Relations, Government of India, welcomes you all to the 400th birth anniversary celebrations of Biru Lasit Borfukon, the 17th century war hero of Assam, who played a key role in the 1671 Battle of Horaighat on the Brahmaputra that prevented a long term attempt by the Mughal forces to recapture Assam protecting the civilization and culture of Assam, as well as the whole of Southeast Asia. Born on November 24, 1622, Bir Lasid Borfukon, an incredible embodiment, indomitable courage and valor, sacrifice and patriotism is one of India's ablest sons. In line with 400th birth anniversary celebrations of Bir Lasid Borfukon, by the Assam government and the government of India, ICCR has made an endeavor to pay tribute to this great national hero by involving people associated with ICCR, both within the country and abroad, across our overseas Indian cultural centers and zonal offices within India. It is a matter of pride for me by you all to join the intellectual exercise and be a part of this historic celebration. Joining us today for this session is Honorable President of ICCR, Dr. Vinay Sahastrabuddhisa, guest speaker, veteran journalist, Dr. Homudra Gupta Kashyap, Acting Director General, Shri Rajiv Kumar, sir, Deputy Director General, Chinmoy Nayak, Deputy Director General, Sumati Vasudev, ma'am, distinguished dignitaries and the staff of ICCR. May I invite President ICCR, Dr. Vinesh Shahshrabuddhi, sir, to deliver his welcome speech. The <clears throat> main speaker for today, a very senior journalist, highly acclaimed for his uh, insightful writings, author of several books, <clears throat> and also who is currently the Information Commissioner of Assam, my good old friend, Dr. Samudra Gupta Kashyap, our Deputy Director Generals, and basically our third <laughs> Acting Director General Rajiv Ji, Chinmay Ji, Sumati Vasudev Ji, and friends. ICCR has started this practice of, uh, in a way, commemorating the great heroes of India who have, in one way or the other, contributed to the war of independence of India or preventing invasion of India of the foreign powers. In keeping with that, uh, this year and from this year onwards, I'm sure it will practice to observe the coronation day of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, which happens to be on the 6th of June. And similarly, the great hero of uh, India, not just Assam, but the entire India, who is also incidentally described as Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj of Assam, that is Veer Lachit Barfukan, whose 400th birth anniversary happens to be today. And therefore, we thought it fit to commemorate the 400th birth anniversary and by that pay our tributes to this uh, great son of Bharat Mata. And therefore, uh, we have organized this uh, oration, this lecture by the veteran journalist from Assam. He will be telling us about the contribution of Lachit Barfukan. But what is more important 
as a student of history, one should be understanding about Lachit is uh, not just he has become the symbol of bravery, valor, but his strategic thinking is also something very, very remarkable. I mean, uh, there are parts in India wherever invasion was prevented by leaders several centuries before in those parts, we could realize that uh, the civilizational culture of India remained a little more unharmed and intact in those parts. And one of them is the beautiful state of Assam and the entire Northeast. We have been knowing about uh, Assam and the Northeast for the Brahmaputra, for the blue hills and the green valleys there. But sadly, the contribution of heroes like Lachit Barfukan unfortunately missed public narratives in our country for a very long time. And therefore, using this occasion of the Ajadi Ka Amrut Mahotsu, which is the 75th year of India's independence. We are pray, paying our tributes to this, uh, as I said, great son of Bharat Mata. I am really happy that uh, cultural centers of the ICCR abroad have also joined. In fact, uh, the entire nation is celebrating this anniversary. Today, Honorable Home Minister is speaking. Tomorrow, Honorable Prime Minister will also be paying his tributes to Lachit Barfukan. And therefore, we all here and abroad through our centers are trying to commemorate the historic contribution of Lachit Barfukan. I'm happy people have from several parts of the globe joined this particular 400th birth anniversary celebration and uh, I'm sure we will be enlightened to the various facets of the contribution of Lachit Barfukan by a very knowledgeable author and journalist Dr. Samudra Gupta Kashyap. Thank you very much. Thank you sir. Before I invite our guest speaker to deliver his lecture on the contribution of Lassit Borfukon in the history of India, a few words about him. Dr. Homudra Gupta Kashyap is a veteran journalist who had reported the Northeast to the outside world for close to four decades. He had worked in Prantik, the most prestigious Assamese fortnightly from 1981 to 1985, in Doini Kohom, the oldest Assamese daily till 1991, and then in the Indian Express till 2018. A master's in English from Guwahati University, he studied development journalism at the Indian Institute of Mass Communication, New Delhi. He obtained his PhD degree in management for his research work on the leadership qualities and social innovations of Sri Mantohongkordev, the 16th century saint reformer of Assam. He has won several prestigious awards for his contribution to media and society, like the Transparency International India's Rai Bahadur MS Oberoi Award, Bhupen Hazurika National Award, to name a few. An author of repute, he has so far written 14 books in English and Assamese. His three latest books published during 2022 are Assam's Great Heroes Who Fought the Muslim Invasions, Told stories of the freedom struggle from Northeast India and India Bangladesh 50 years of friendship. Dr. Kashyap has also done the research and written scripts for several acclaimed documentaries and TV serials. Two most important are Bhupen Hazurika's 26 episode Durdarshan serial on the Northeast called Brahmaputra, Son of Brahma, An Endless Journey, and Utpal Varpujari's Memories of a Forgotten War. Dr. Kashyap was still recently on the boards and academic councils of several prestigious academic institutions across the country, including in Institute of Democratic Leadership. 
He is currently a State Information Commissioner in Assam. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me with a round of applause to invite our guest speaker this evening, Dr. Homodra Gupta Kashyap from Assam. Uh, thank you, uh, Sri Vinay Sahasabuddhiji, the President of ICCR, other officials of ICCR, uh, other dignitaries present here, and friends across the globe who are watching us online. I bring to you the greetings from the, from the people of Assam, from the banks of the Brahmaputra, on the occasion of the 400th birth anniversary of Lachit Barfukan, the greatest general that Assam had ever produced and because of which, because of whose great strategy and victory in the Battle of Horaig Hat in Guwahati in March 1671, which signaled the collapse of the Mughal Empire in the subsequent decades. <coughs> uh, since we have uh, people watching us or listening to us from across the globe, I'll give you a small background of where exactly Lachit Borfukon or the Battle of Horaig Hat is located. Is located. As I am being one of the uh, important states of India, uh, located in the northeastern region, has remained part of the Bharat Barsha since time immemorial. As some figures in all the ancient Indian scriptures, most prominently in the Mahabharata and particularly in the Battle of Kurukshetra. On the political front, as I have never been uh, part of the uh, larger uh, Bharat Bars, political Bharat Barsha but rather the kings of Assam, the heroes of Assam, the warriors of Assam had fought alongside the other great kings and those and warriors of the other parts of the country. And the most significant in the mythological period was King Bhagadatta of Kamrup, who had sided with the Kauravas in the Battle of Kurukshetra, and he was the oldest, the most aged warrior in that particular battle. And he had come to the battle with one Akshahini of elephants, that is 1.8 black elephants, if you count that, Akshavini. Uh, in the historical period, we find uh, a great friend of Harsha Vardhana was Kumar Bhaskar Brahman Amrup, who again was a great ally. It was Bhaskar Brahman who had defeated Sasanka of Bengal on behalf of Harsha. Harsha. And if you look at the uh, Harsha's uh, um, part of the story, if you look at just one episode of the great public reception that was given to Yuen Sang, the uh, Buddhist scholar from China at Prayag, you find that Yuen Sang, Kumar Bhaskar, and Harsha were seated on the pedestal, and 18 other kings of central India at the time were in the audience. That was the kind of uh, uh, friendship or alliance that the King uh, Assam had enjoyed at that time. If we jump to the establishment of the slave dynasty in Delhi by Kutubuddin Aybek around 1200 AD. Immediately after that, Kutubuddin Aybek had dispatched one of his generals, uh, whose name was Iftiyar al Din Muhammad Bakhtiyar Khalji, to an adventure or, an, uh, uh, or, or what would I say, an expedition of everything that lied east of Delhi at that time. And if you go through history, you'll find that he, one by one, occupied all the places, Prayag, Kanauj, Abad, Benares, all these small principalities of Patna and Bihar, and Bengal, and then finally the doors of the king of Guwahati at that time, Maharaja Prithu. We have with us uh, Raktim uh, Pator, who had recently written a book on Maharaja Prithu, who was uh, better known as, uh, who was officially known as Vishwasundara Deva. And in 1206, this great invader, this general, who was dispatched by Kutubuddin Aybek, was defeated in Guwahati, in, in the present day Guwahati. And then he was chased off. He, his uh, army of about one lakh people, had, one lakh soldiers, had literally evaporated on the banks of the Brahmaputra. And Khalji managed to get back to Bengal. And within a week or so, he died of embarrassment, defeat. Uh, and that had happened to him on reaching Dev Court, currently uh, probably is in uh, present day Bangladesh. That was the beginning of the invasion from the West to Assam. And since then, there were a series of invasions 
from the West, in the sense that from Central India or Delhi, which were in quick succession held by various uh, invaders who rule here, beginning with the slave dynasty. But most of these expeditions to Assam or to the banks of the Brahmaputra, we didn't have a particular state called Assam at that time. There were different kingdoms, different principalities. But Kamrup centering around Guwahati was the largest at that time. And most of these invasions were resisted by a series of uh, local heroes, I would say. Uh, if you, if I, I, there are very some interesting names which uh, need to be remembered at this time. Like in uh, after Maharaja Prithu had defeated uh, Bhakti Al Khalji in 1206, there was Sandhya, a king from uh, of Kamrup, who had killed Tughril Khan, the next second uh, invader. Then it was Durlav Narayan, again a king of Kamrup, who had defeated Sultan Tughlaq in uh, 1330 AD. Then again another Kamrup king called Indra Narayan, who defeated Sikandar Shah. Then there was a, then by that time, in, in 1228, it arrived in Assam a new uh, a group of people who we today know as the Ahoms. Now, uh, you have to differentiate between Ahom and an Assamese. Ahom is a part of the larger Assamese identity. Uh, it was a, a great general again. He belonged to a royal family of a place called Mong Mao, which would be somewhere in southern China today. At that time, that was not part of uh, China. And he had arrived in Assam. And on landing in the Brahmaputra Valley, uh, beside a river called Adisang, uh, near a place called Nam Rup in Upper Assam, he saw this beautiful valley and said, Mundung Chun Kham, this is the golden valley I was looking for, it was in, in his language, the Thai language. And the Ahom dynasty had, it was established in 1228, 1230, 35, like that, and it expanded gradually in eastern Assam, and finally it came to shared boundary with Kham Rup, which was Central or Western Assam, beginning with Guwahati. And by the time the Ahom dynasty was established, there were three glorious Assamese dynasties, beginning with uh, the river Dikorai in Hodia, which is now uh, as a boundary between Arunachal and Assam in the east, from where you measure the Brahmaputra, to the Kartua, which is near Siliguri in present day northern Bengal. The eastern part was called Ahom, that is Ahom kingdom. The central part was called Kamrup, which was a coach kingdom. Coach is another Assamese uh, ethnic uh, community. And the third was Coach Bihar, which is present day uh, North Bengal, Coach Bihar and, and Siliguri, the entire area. And over the years, as Bengal had been already occupied, Coach Bihar was surrounded. The Coach King, the Coach General Chilara, he fought well, but then he was defeated by the uh, Bengal Sultans of that time. And Finally, after in 1526, when the Mughal dynasty was established by Babur, it took over Bengal. The Bengal uh, uh, sultans were gone, and you had Mughal rulers there. And gradually, the Mughals began in incursions into these three kingdoms, Assamese kingdoms, that is Koch Bihar, Kamrup, or Koch Haj, it is called, and Assam. Uh, there are numerous other, other local heroes who had fought. In one particular area, which is called Dakhin Kul, that is the Dakshin part of the Brahmaputra, west of Guwahati, up to where India meets Bangladesh in Koraibari, which is uh, the westernmost uh, district of Assam, which is called South Salmara today, where if you remember, there were 21 BSF Jawans who were killed about uh, 15 years ago at that point, particularly exactly that area, till that was called Dakshin Kul. And in Dakshin Kul, there were 18 local chiefs who fought valiantly. The small chiefs who were, who were say, uh, what do I say, 20, 30 villages each that type, but they resisted and they, they several of them won against the invading Mughal forces with their traditional weapons, whereas the Mughals were armed with. Uh, <laughs> in 1613, uh, the Mughals finally occupied the Kamrup, that is the central kingdom, and they came face to face with the Ahoms. Uh, east of Guwahati was the border between the Ahom kingdom and the uh, Kamarup Kingdom. And then the direct uh, conflict between the Ahoms and the uh, Mughals began. And there were several ups and downs. In most of the battles, the Ahoms are winners. We'll come to that, how they win. And But in 1638 was the biggest attack of, by the Mughals on Assam. 
which was led by a general called Mir Jumla, and entire assembly, entire Brahmaputra Valley came under the occupation. The Ahom king fled from his capital at Gargaon near Nazira today in Sivsagar district, and he took shelter at the, in the Namrup jungles. And finally, he was chased till there. And in 1633, not 1633, a treaty of Ghilajari Ghat was, was signed, were compelled to be signed on their homes. It was imposed by which several hundred elephants, several tons of gold, several tons of silver, and on particular clauses there, that the king's minor daughter had to be handed over to the, for the Mughal harem. That was the condition. The young princess was handed over, and a part, and uh, the Indian this way had to be paid in installments. Fortunately, around that time, floods had come, the rains had come, and the Mughals withdrew from Assam, but then the treaty was remained in force, and there were periodic reminders for submission or, or handing over the subsequent indemnities, including elephants and other, and three uh, young officers of the, very brave officers of the Ahom Kingdom Army were taken for clearing the uh, dues. In, around that time, the, uh, the then king of the Ahom Kingdom was Chakradwa Simha. They had two names, one of the Ahom name, and they gradually adopted Hinduism. They also had a Hindu name called Chakradwa Simha. He took upon himself the, the uh, vow that we have to throw off foreign yoke. And how it happened was that, in addition to the repeat reminders for meeting the, uh, the for paying these indemnities, they also repeated demands for supplying of young ladies to the harem of the governor of Mughal governor of Kamrup as well as to the uh, harem of the Mughal governor of Bengal. The Mughal governor of Bengal was at that time the youngest son of uh, Aurangzeb. <coughs> Chakraja Sinha uh, Simha picked up a young officer called Lachit Deka. Deka means a young man in Assamese. And Rashid, in fact, was the son of a great prime minister called uh, a great, uh, what do they call, a Borborua. Borborua is a kind of a cabinet secretary in the Ahom system. It was his son, his second son, Lachit, was picked up because Lachit had earlier been to the cabinet room and been to the uh, uh, meetings accompanying his father and he was appointed a Tamuli or a person who'd carry the plate or the dish of Tamul Pan. Uh, to the uh, cabinet or to the king's meeting. That was how he came into contact with the king. And he was seen, he was picked up. He gradually rose, he was made a Ghora Barua, which was in charge of the horses, royal horses. Then he was appointed a Dola Kahoria Barua. He was in charge, he was officer of the Dola, all the people who uh, look after the uh, palanquins or the Dolas of the king. And then as the king was preparing, it was Lachit, one day he asked Lachit, what do you think? Will we be able to throw, uh, throw away the Mughal foreign yoke? Young Lachit, who was just a Barua, Barua is a very sm small officer. He said, the Mughals are also human beings like us. And if we try, we can definitely overthrow them because this is our land. And we have a commitment to our land. They are only kind of mercenaries who have come to fight for others. He was immediately picked up and first appointed a Pukan. A Pukan is a uh, kind of a commander, and then <laughs> to the Bor Fukun, which is the commander chief or the general. The king on one side, the prime minister on the other, his name at the time was Aton Buragohai. Buragohai is a, is a, Buragohai means a prime minister. Burha is the old, Gohai is a minister. And the general, Lachi, these three persons drew up the strategy, fresh recruitments were made. Massive reformation of the army was done. Assam didn't have a standing army, unlike most other kingdoms. In Assam, it's a kind of a militia. Everybody had to come to the war when there was a call, irrespective of whether he was a priest or whether he was a king's son or even a king. So even priests of temples were one, uh, required to join the war if, the requirement, if there was a need or there was a call of duty. Massive preparations were made. Lachit Purfukon toured the entire country from the upper Assam to Guwahati and beyond, and made a survey, got series of ramparts, earthen ramparts constructed 
so that we can make a series of uh, lines of defense. And then chose Guwahati to be the vantage point for, from where the whole battle would be or the defense would be conducted. <clears throat> By that time, Mir Jumla had passed away on his return from Guwahati. He passed away near Dhaka, presently Dhaka. And Aurangzeb dispatched a new general by the name of Raja Ram Singh, who was a king of Amber of uh, Rajasthan. There are two theories to that. One was that they, they were good fighters, but the other was that there was also there was also a punishment posting for him because he apparently he was allegedly he had conspired for the great escape of Shivaji from Agra into sweet baskets. <clears throat> As Ram Singh arrived, Lachit Borfokan had a fantastic intelligence system. The day Lachit, uh, the day in December uh, 1667, around the same year, that Aurangzeb had flagged off the army led by uh, Ram Singh for Assam. Within two days, Lachit was in that this is the size of the army, this is the composition, these many people are there, this, many, this is the size of the cavalry, this is the size of the uh, other, other forces, and the entire breakup of the composition of the army. That was the kind of uh, intelligence system he had. This intelligence system was, uh, uh, was also used for other purposes later on. <clears throat> Ram Singh took about one year to reach Guwahati. On the way, he picked up a series of other, other, other levees from Bihar, there were 2,000 soldiers added from the uh, uh, governor of Bengal, from Dhaka, who had early, who were early deployed in Assam, who had known the territory and so on. And after arriving in Guwahati, he took, uh, the Mughal army took position on the north of the Brahmaputra, and the Ahom army took position on the south of the Brahmaputra. And if you go to Guwahati today, you'll find the heritage bungalow in Guwahati on a elevated a small hillock called, in, a hillock in Assamese is called Tila, and this Tila is called Borfukon or Tila, the Tila of Borfukon, which used to be the deputy commissioner's bungalow or the commissioner's bungalow of Assam since the British took over Guwahati. It was on that uh, hillock that he set up his office and his residence and said, if I sit down and fight from here, it would be like fighting from home. Because from that point, you can see the entire approach up to the Assam Valley of the Brahmaputra. The Brahmaputra expands after it passes Guwahati to the west, and anybody entering from there can be easily seen from the vantage point. Now, as far as the Lachi's strategy is concerned, there's a saying in the Assam history, which, has, uh, which was coined, this saying was coined by H.K. Barpujari, a former president of the Indian History Congress, when he, which he had said, an Assamese monsoon is as terrible as the Russian winter. If you look at all the wars and the battles that are taken, is the Assamese or the Ahoms would wait for the winter, uh, wait for the monsoons to arrive so that you can move faster and so that the enemy, because the Assam army didn't have a cavalry, but the invaders always had cavalry, they had horsemen and horses. It was difficult for horses to ride in mud, slush, and water. So that was the strategy. But what had happened? For two years, the Rachid Borfogon in the south. And his prime minister happened uh, after uh, sitting on strategic positions and face to face with the Mughal army of Ram Singh, sat down looking at each for two years. They were pressure from Delhi, from Aurangzeb, what are you doing there? And they were pressure from Gorgaon, the capital of the Ahom Kingdom, that we have sent you to, I have sent dispatch you to fight a war and not to level up a friendship with the Mughals. That was the warning from both sides. Lachit waited for a, a, a monsoon. Apparently, monsoon failed in 1670. Under the pressure of the king, Rashid had to one day probably prove that how we, we cannot fight on a plain land. And on a single day in 1671 itself, took place a battle west of Guwahati, northwest of Guwahati, a place called Alaboy, which is an open field. And between sunrise and sunset, 10,000 Assamese soldiers perished because of the cavalry power of the Mughal invading army. Immediately the strategy was, uh, the king was convinced that we, had, we have to wait till we can lure them into the water. The Brahmaputra flows from the east to the west. All invaders have to sail upstream. And the Assamese had to only sail down with the water, with the flow of the water. And that advantage was taken. And we gradually lured into the Brahmaputra 
in the heart of Guwahati. There were several other smaller, smaller battles in between, but small incidents there. And they were gradually being lured in. And as they were lured in, they, they came in bigger ships and the Assamese deployed smaller boats, which could facilitate faster movement. That was the strategy which was adopted. There were massive fortifications around Guwahati. There were no routes through which it could come. And it, this, this uh, makes me recall that Guwahati has always been a natural fort kind of a thing. If you, if you even look at the Yogini Tantra and if you look at the other, other old, old uh, scriptures, you'll find that Guwahati has always been a natural fort surrounded by uh, hills on four sides and also the waterways on two sides. As they were trapped into it, hundreds of boats were dispatched from the north and south and the east into the Brahmaputra, which is surrounded. And the Brahmaputra was covered entirely. It looked like a makeshift bridge. And hundreds of soldiers were put in there. But despite that, the gunpowder of the Mughals was still very uh, superior to the power that the, the gunpowder that the Assamese had. And there was not much of supply because there was no backup for the Assamese, but there were backup for the Mughal forces from Bengal. That backup was there, that, that reinforcement facility was there. But as they trapped, there were some hesitations in the beginning, but then Lachit declared. Lachit at that time was not keeping well, he was running high fever. Despite the fever, the fever he went down and his, he was carried to a boat and he led from the front. And within less than four or five hours, the greatest battle on, a uh, greatest naval battle on a river took place, ended, and the result was that the Mughal army was defeated. The most crushing defeat, as General S.K. Sinha, a former governor of Assam, had put it, that it was the most crushing defeat on the, Mughal, on the Mughal, the mighty Mughal army. Now, where do we place? And then, unfortunately, after a few months, Lachit Barfukhan passed away. But that, not, that did not leave the legacy of Lachit Barfukhan uh, uh, and the invasions that were happening to Assam from the west, from Delhi. A few years later, there were changes. A new king had come in. There were political uh, changes in Assam. And Nurullah Hingha was the king who is compared with uh, Samudra Gupta of India, the golden period of Assamese history, uh, which is comparable to the golden period of Indian history. And Rudra Sinha, inspired by Rachid Barfugan's victory, worked out a plan with all the smaller Hindu chiefs and kings of Eastern India that we forge an alliance including the hills of, including the chiefs of present-day Meghalaya, <clears throat> you to forge an alliance, and once for all, we invade Delhi and wipe out the Mughal power from Delhi. That was the kind of plan it was drawn. About one lakh soldiers were drawn from different parts of Assam. And then also the tribals and the hill people had joined this uh, great force, and they were already ready there in Guwahati. Unfortunately, again, Rudra Simha passed away, and that plan remained there. <coughs> now, if we look at it from the military point of view, the, the strategist in Rachid Borfukan probably has no comparison because he had made a combination of the army and navy. One, but smaller boats, strategic, not bigger boats, because, because it's a, it is a case of maneuvering on the Brahmaputra. And, and one cannot work on the Brahmaputra, or cannot function on the Brahmaputra until and unless you know this river. It is the most unpredictable river on earth, most braided river. So you have to know the channels and so on. That's just good at that. Number two is that the deployment. Because of the terrain, Assam is not a broad valley, it's just about uh, 15 kilometers north of Guwahati and about 20 kilometers south of Guwahati, 45 to 50 kilometer wide valley, the Brahmaputra Valley being there. You cannot fight in the conventional manner that we see in northern India or elsewhere. There, there could be comparison with the Marathas because they also had the similar terrain and they were mostly guerrilla welfare. In this deployment, if you look at the deployment that was happening for the Great Battle of Harai Ghat, in which they were defeated. You'll find that every contingent would have, say, 200 people there, a company here with 200 people, of which 40 or 50 would be commandos. These commandos were called Chor Basas. Chor is Chor, and Basa were soldiers. So they were commandos, they were spies, they were multitasking you know, multi people. They, they could do everything. And these were the people who, could, who could go to any, any extent. They were specially trained by Lachit Porpukon. 
if you look at it today, we have the paratroopers and the other commandos in the army, despite the regular army. So that was, I think, probably somewhere this idea came up. It's not necessarily that it came up only from Latin Protocol, but that was one, one area where it came. Number two, if you look at it, you, you find that uh, what was what was in, in this invasion indicate, this invasion, repeated invasion of Assam, particularly if you look at Aurangzeb's uh, 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 decision or his command or his order or direction was that we invade Assam, occupy them, and then cross over to Southeast Asia. That doesn't have that plan. Uh, uh, since the Mughal uh, dynasty had uh, settled down in India. That was greatly resisted. And that was foiled. Had it not been foiled, if you look at the place of Assam in the geopolitics and the geostrategic location of Assam in present-day global politics, you'll find that Assam and the North is sandwiched between so many countries. It has the longest uh, boundary with China. It has the longest boundary with Myanmar. It is the longest boundary with Bangladesh. It has bang, uh, boundary with Bhutan. And as you go further from Myanmar, you'll find that it is an entirely strategic area. Much forward in history, you'll find that a similar thing had happened when the Japanese had invaded or, or came face to face with the Allied army in the battles of Kohima and Imphal. Had Imphal and Kohima fallen during the Second World War, the whole entire shape of the global politics would have been different. Likewise, had Guwahati fallen, had Assam come under the Mughal rule, the entire geopolitics of Southern, Southeast Asia would have been different today. So it's a very interesting comparison between these two. We find number three, if you look at it, Sam, though it was not politically part of India, it was part of Bharat Barsha from time immemorial. Uh, we had this great Saint Hankar Dev in the 15th, 16th century. And it was from his school of thought that had uh, come this great quote called Dhanya Dhanya Kalikal, Dhanya Naratanubhal, Dhanya Dhanya Bharata Varishe. That means, uh, though I'm born in Kalikal, I, I'm glad, I'm happy, I'm fortunate I'm born in this Bharat Varsha. That is the kind of glorification that has done, been done in Asimi's verse. And if you get it, this entire Bhakti movement, which has taken to Assam by Hongkordi, or extended to Assam by Hongkordi in the 15th, 16th century, had brought two, two kind of uh, uh, civilizations or two movements together. Assam became part of India through the Bhakti movement, and India became part of Assam in the Bhakti movement. So Assam converged through the Bhakti movement on one side, which was uh, not initially, but later on, patronized by the Ahom kings. And there are four uh, Vaishnavite monasteries in Assam today, which continue to be patronized by the state. And even the appointment of the chief there has to be approved by the state, that, because that, was, that tradition was set up by the Ahom kings. So in that way, this battle of Horaighat and the victory at Horaighat, Lachit Borfogan had also protected what we call the quote unquote Indian culture that we have across the region, going into Assam, into Meghalaya, into uh, part of Naga Hills, and of course, into Arunachal Pradesh. So that, that, that is the third area. And Uh, the, uh, yesterday, as the, as the celebration of this uh, 400 birth anniversary had begun in, the new, in New Delhi, and there was a speaker, General R.P. Kalita. He is again is an SME. He is the uh, GOC Eastern Command in Kolkata. He was uh, telling us this. Uh, he was analyzing Lachit Burfu on the military aspect. And he said there's a tremendous scope of taking the lessons from Lashid Barfukan's strategies and the way he conducted the war, he built up the whole war for uh, becoming a training modules in the NDA at NDC, the National Defense College, and uh, at War College at Mao. Very interestingly, while the rest of the country we are discussing or we are talking about Lashid Barfukan only on the occasion of the 400 birth anniversary, which the Assam government had built up in a massive way in the national capital, uh, which was uh, uh, formally inaugurated about six weeks ago by the president of India. It was in 1999 that a statue of Lachit Borfukon was installed at the National Defense Academy at Karagbasala in Pune. And very surprisingly, till 1991, there was no particular award or medal for the best cadet of the Indian Army coming out from NDA. 
in, it was in 1999 that the government of Assam had sponsored a Lachit Barfukan gold medal for the best cadet passing out from uh, the NDA. There's some, that, that's the kind of recognition that has come from where it should come from. It's from the defense, it's from the army that this recognition has come. But it took more than 75 years in the new India that we live, in the independent India, that we were looking at that India lives, India exists, and has existed to the east beyond Bengal. Lachit Burfukon is one. If you look at, at the this present time of Great Mahotsav that we are celebrating, you'll find that there are numerous such stories. I'm not trying to demean anybody, but if you look at Mangal Pandey, or the first hanging of an Indian freedom fighter, you look at the year 1857, you'll find in 1830, the first two Assamese were hanged by the British in Sif Sagar. In 1788, on the 22nd of November, the first attack on the British were done by an, by an Assamese um, uh, Jamindar or a young Jamindar in Gualpara district, which was then part, which had passed on to the British early because that had become part of Mughal Bengal in, uh, uh, in 1765. Well, these are, it's, it's gradually, and Lachit Barfukan doesn't just represent, uh, uh, or, or doesn't, he, he's not just a, uh, military general, but this is his concept, it's an idea, is an inspiration of patriotism, of courage, of valor, and of the protection of the identity and culture of a nation. India doesn't exist as a nation only somewhere around Delhi. The nation exists everywhere, whether it was in, in Shivaji's land, whether it was in uh, Rana Pratap's land, whether it is in the south, whether the east and the north, and you'll be amazed, like, uh, just pulling up from there. I was recently doing a book on the uh, uh, freedom struggle or the anti-colonial movement. What we had missed as a nation is that we didn't look at those tribal uh, communities in Northeast, Nagaland, for instance. They fought like anything. Several hundred Nagas had fought, died fighting the British. The British had to pull up a navy, a naval force up to Dibrugar to tackle the Arunachal tribes of present-day Arunachal. And those stories have not been told to the nation so far is is to a problem. The 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 uh, those who had set the agenda from Delhi had not looked at it, and those from Assam had not probably raised their voice, or they they, they were less opportunity for raising their voice uh, at where it should have been voiced. But uh, as the Assam government has been pursuing this uh, case of uh, Rachid Borfukan uh, in the last two three days, this uh, there has been a popular uh, what would I say? It's not a demand, but it's a uh, thing that, yes, Lachit Porfukan should figure prominently in school textbooks so that young people who would be citizens of the country tomorrow would be also learning the story of Lachit Porfukan alongside that of Shivaji and all other valiant heroes who had fought and protected this land from being wiped out culturally, from, wiped out, from, from the civilization being wiped out. Yes, talk here, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Lachit Barfukan, if you look at the SME's psyche or if you look at the SME's uh, mind, you'll find that Lachit Barfukan was mentioned, I'm borrowing this from a professor of the Brugge University, was an icon or was an idea or was an inspiration even during the early British period when the British had occupied Assam in 1826 through the Battle of, uh, through, the, through the Treaty of Yandabu, which was signed with the occupying forces of Burma at that time. As I had a difficult time between 1817 and 1826, there were three invasions from Burma and there were civil wars and so on. Uh, and as I had passed on to the hands of the British. But Lachit Borfogon was remembered while fighting against the British. If you say Lachit Borfogon, that raises that nationalist spirit in Assam that you fight against. When there was a crisis of the language, as the British took over Assam in 1837, they had removed the Assamese language and imposed a neighboring language there. There was a huge uh, uh, struggle for to revive for the restoration of the language. And again, Lachit Prabhupada was remembered there that we have to fight like Lachit to get back the uh, the exact position of the language there. If you look at it uh, the, the, in 1946, when there was this grouping plan and that Assam had almost passed into the a uh, new map of uh, Eastern Pakistan. And even Bengal would have been entirely gone there. People in Assam remembered, recalled, and invoked the, the name of Placid Borfukon. 
1962, Bhupen Hazarika wrote that famous song, the Hindi version is Dil Hum Hum Kare, but the Assamese song that again talks about how Assam has been fighting against the British, but then Lachit is somewhere remembered there. So Lachit comes back again and again and again. And when there is a crisis, when there is a crisis, people refer to the Battle of Harai Khan. If you look at the uh, interesting book uh, uh, on the 2016 Assam Assembly elections, that says Assam's last Sarai Ghat. Bhupan Hazarika sang that song during the peak of the Assam agitation when, uh, against the illegal migrants from Bangladesh, that is there a call to go again to the Battle of Horai Ghat? Do we have to go again? Ako jodi jabo lage Horai Ghat or Lui? That was the song. So the Horai Ghat, Lachit, Horai Ghat, Lachit, it comes back again and again in times of crisis, every Assamese invokes that name, every Assamese recalls that name. Uh, we wish that it also becomes, uh, it also becomes a national icon alongside Shivaji and all of the great leaders who had protected this land, protected this culture, protected this civilization. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for enlightening us with your knowledge and detailed information on Bir Lasit Borfukun. Before we conclude, may I request President ICCR, Dr. Vinay Sahasrabuddhi, sir, to share his remarks. Uh, I just wanted to thank uh, Dr. Samudra Gupta Kashyap for a very enlightening address at the occasion of the 400th birth anniversary of Veer Lachit Barfukan. And uh, not as a journalist, but more like an academic, I believe, uh, Dr. Samudra Gupta elaborately explained us uh, because of the depth of his research and uh, uh, because of his insightful uh, uh, kind of understanding of uh, the wars fought by Lachit Barfukan and the uh, situation in that particular point of time in the history of India as well as the history of Assam. And therefore, uh, I'm sure with this uh, new understanding, new knowledge, that uh, probably many of us might have got for the first time, we will be uh, paying our rich tributes to Lachit Barfukan and uh, uh, it will become, uh, at least now onwards, a part of the consciousness of all of us who love India, who love Bharat Mata. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I conclude with excerpts from a poet great Ahom General Lasit Borfukan on his 400th birth anniversary by Sangeet Natak Academy awardee, dramatist, playwright Sridulal Roy, English version by Srikulokomal Roy. Mumai is not bigger than the country, say a Lasit. Against the Mughal armies who attacked Assam 17 times unsuccessfully to conquer Assam, the protector Lasit, fearless, impassive, but an unpredictable warrior Lasit, the repeller of Mughals, shining brightly Lasit, burning bright in every true Assamese heart Lasit. On behalf of everyone participating today, both online and offline, I extend our gratitude to Honorable President Sir for taking the initiative to organize today's lecture program commemorating the contribution of Bir Lasit Borfukon and reintroducing Lasit Borfukon to all of us once again. We remain grateful to Acting Director General ICCR Sri Rajiv Kumarji, Deputy Director General Chinmay Naikji, Deputy Director General Sumati Vasudevji, our guest who have joined us today, historians Dr. Roktim Pator, Gorgaon College, Dr. Sondon Kumar Horma, Dibrugarh University, nationally acclaimed film critic and filmmaker, Sri Utpal Barpujari. Our guests who have joined us today, friends of ICCR within India and overseas, senior ICCR officials and the large ICCR family.
We thank everyone joining us this evening for the historic celebration of Lasit Borfukan. Namaskar and Shubhratri.